Hello, and today I'll be teaching you how to hack your Wii U to load the homebrew channel. So, um, everything will be in the description if you need to download or read something over. So, with that said, let's begin by opening up the internet browser, and we'll be going to a bookmark that is called loadiine.ovh. Um, you can create this bookmark by editing any of the known bookmarks that are included on the Wii U normally, and just redirecting the URL to said URL earlier. And this web page load up will be loading up the Homebrew Launcher 1.2 RC3. So it'll redirect you to a new page saying that it's loading up the Homebrew. Uh, from here, it'll load up a MP4 um, exploit that will send you back to the Wii, Wii U menu if it was loaded correctly. Um, if it didn't, you'll need to power off your Wii U by holding the power button for four seconds and try again. Now, on my Wii U SD card, I have these different pr plugins set up. We'll be launching the TCP Gecko, um, and we'll be pressing X here to install it with the Cosmo Courtney's code handler. Um, this will be used for the JGecko U uh, application that will be running on the computer, and we'll be connecting that to the Wii U to handle the code manipulation of the game. Now, we, for the demonstration's purposes, I shall be loading up the Legend of Zelda Hyrule Warriors game that I have on my external hard drive. Um, this is the eShop version of the game, so if you're using a disc-based game, you'll just load it from the disc channel. If you're using a downloaded version of the game outside of the eShop, like you, a backup copy or something like that, you would have to run it through Loadine, and I'm not going to be covering that because I don't personally do that kind of stuff. So anyways, now the game's loading up, we'll have the JGECO on the side window over here. Actually, let me kind of rearrange these things a little bit to make it a little bit easier to demonstrate everything. Since the game's loading up, there's not really anything we can do at the moment. But it should work like this. So, we have the game connected to the menu, we're gonna go ahead and tell it to connect to the Wii U IP address. Uh, the Wii U IP address can be found by going to the developer tools in the settings option of the internet browser, and it will display the Wii U's uh, IP address there. Alternatively, if you're using a router, you can just go into your router settings and see where the Wii U is connected. Now, as you can see, I have all these different cheats connected to the JGECO code base already. Uh, we'll be going over some of these in a little bit, but right now let's go ahead and get into the game and go into a map so that way we can show off some of the stuff. See, this one should be fine, I think. Let's go ahead and open up the bazaar, so that way we can show off the first one, which is the rupees. This is probably the most useful for everyone, because this will help you power level a lot of your other characters without having to do too much work. So, um, going back over to my code list here, just resizing it a little bit. As you can see, this max rupee code right here, if we go to edit code... Uh, oh, gotta open up the window in OBS here, hang on a moment window. There we go. So, as you can probably see, because it's too small, there we go. That's the code for the Max Rubies, and this highlight bit here is the address in the uh, Wii's RAM system, and this one is the value that the address holds. So, if we were to go and copy this address here, close out of that, and where is it? Where's the memory viewer? There's memory viewer. If we go to the memory viewer and take this address that's right here, get rid of it, and paste the address that we want to view into there, we can see the value is that of the maximum amount of rupees that the game will allow. Now, I'm going to show off here, you can't just simply write the text the value of the rupees that you want, so let's say that you want all sevens for rupees. You can't just go in here in the text editor and type out all sevens, because when we poke the address, it's going to update to something very, very bizarre. All these codes work in hex, so you'll have to go to get your hex calculator, which all Windows operating systems have one uh, readily available. So let's just open up the calculator real quick, and type out all sevens in decimal, and we should get a hex value of 76 ADF1. Now since this is a 32-bit value, um, we have to have uh, extra space at the beginning of the value to be able to compensate. So, as you can see here, we add 00, zero to the beginning of it to, to give in the extra bits of information that are needed. 16-bit uh, will need four values, and 8-bit will need only two. 
So as you can see, when we update this, it'll update the ruby count in real time. So basically just repoking this address with a new value uh, every time will allow you to have infinite rupees. Alternatively, using the code injection method um, of JGECO, you can have the value frozen indefinitely. So you won't have to worry about um, constantly poking the address to be able to get updated rupee values. So here I'm just messing around with the rupee values a little bit to level up my character and just demonstrate what it does. Um, but that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and exit back out of that and actually go into the game and show off some of the other codes. Now, to be able to find these addresses, you would need a address searcher to be able to find where the values are um, in the memory. That will be covered in a different video, but for now I'm just focusing on how to actually use these because that was part of the request I've been getting was how do I use these codes and how do I know which codes to use. Um, so now that we get into the game here, into the actual level, I'll go ahead and cover the um, the KO count. That'll probably be the easiest one to demonstrate. Go ahead and inject the codes into the game and start the battle. <laughs> As you can see, we have the KO count updated to begin with. Um, the game doesn't actually create new KO count uh, values uh, between different missions. It's a it's a static uh, address that is always accessed throughout every mission. It just gets reset back to zero once the mission is finished. So I'm just ignoring the gameplay for right now just to show off these codes. Another code that I have active that I'm not actually going to cover right now is the no damage taken code. Basically what you do is you'll take damage like I was showing in the video. You lose the hearts, but we don't have the damage taken on the pause menu. Normally you would have damage taken on the pause menu in increments of 100 per quarter health of, well, per quarter of heart that you lose in game. Um, so basically what you do with an address searcher there is just find a value of an address range that has an increment of 100, always um, increasing as you lose health, and once you find the address you just manipulate to be frozen to zero and you have infinite health, essentially, or rather always a rank health loss. Now here I'm showing the KO count address and the value for it. Um, you can manipulate the address with well, the value in the code injection and re-inject the code and it'll update to freeze code there. Alternatively you can go into memory viewer with the address that you find and poke a new address into the um, well poke a new mem value into the address to be able to update the KO count um, on the fly like this. And you can set it to whatever you want. So That'll do it for this video on how to access memory and update uh, addresses. Like I said, in the next one I'll be going over how to find said addresses. So thank you guys for watching and stick around for the next tutorial.